waiting. I was out for a run. You see, I'm training because I'm going to be running in a race soon. I'm a little bit out of breath because I've been doing a lot of running. You know, when I was at school, I used to do a lot of running and sometimes I was even the winner in the race. Have you ever been a winner before? Being a winner is just the best feeling, I think. The winner, the champion, the one that's beat everybody else. My school used to have a little podium. I'm not sure if you've seen one of those before. And if you were the winner, your name got called out by the person that was doing the announcing and you got to climb up and stand right on the top of the podium. And then everybody would cheer and clap for you and your team, your house at school, would all be so excited that their team were getting some points. There was even a song they used to sing. It went like this. B-R-C, D-R-C, B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Victory, victory is our cry. There was a great song. That's what victory is. It's all about being the winner. Now today, we've got a superhero that's coming to join us again. And she really is a winning superhero. I can't wait to meet her. called that before, but the other superheroes started calling me that because I always will. When we have superhero races, I am the fastest. In the pool, I swim the fastest, and at hockey, I score most goals, and at high jump, I jump the highest. My bedroom is full of medals. I have the victory, no one ever beats me. I am the winner, I am champion. Oh wow, it must be wonderful being champion, the superhero. Imagine just winning all the time. Everything that you ever do, you're the winner, you're the champion. She's really had a lot of experience with victory. Victory means winning. It means beating everything else. It means coming out on the top, being the best at whatever's going on, overcoming everybody or everything else. Now, you know, for me, I'm doing a little bit of running at the moment. But you know, for me, even if I ran for three hours every morning and for two hours every night and I did all my exercises and I ate all the right food, I probably still wouldn't have the victory in the race when I ran it. I'm a bit old and a bit fat for that now. But there's good news for me and for you. God's power makes me victorious. God's power gives me the victory. Now, you know, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he's real. I believe that he's God. I believe that he came to earth and he died and then he came alive again. And I've asked Jesus to forgive my sin and to come and live in my heart. I've said to him, Jesus, you can have me. I'll live my life for you. And so I know that Jesus lives in me. And so God's power is in me. And so I know that I can have the victory. I can be victorious because God's power is in me. I want you to get up on your feet now so that we can sing and celebrate God's power together.
God's power lives in me and his power is greater than the world. His power gives me the victory. Every week we read something from the Bible to show us something that heroes need to know. And this week it's important that heroes know this. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us the victory because of Jesus. Now, I need to explain something to you about that. I've explained to you that I've got God's power in me. And that verse tells us that God's power gives us the victory in lives. But, and this is a big but, that doesn't mean that every time I run a race, I'm going to win. Or every time I swim in a gala, I'm going to win. Or every time I play a soccer match, my team's going to win. And I'm going to be the champion at my ballet competition. Those things are nice, but the victory that it's talking about is actually a, a, a victory over much more important stuff. It's nice to be the winner in a race, but God wants us to have the victory over much more important stuff. Now, I've asked some of our kids' church team to tell us their experience, to tell us about something that used to beat them, that used to be in control of them, and how God's given them the victory. So sit back and listen to these wonderful real-life stories. Hi, boys and girls. How are you? Hope you're having a lovely, lovely day, and I hope you enjoy seeing your friends again. Today I want to go over something that I think we all need to conquer in our lives, but in the right way, and that is worry. This has become such an easy thing for me to just forget about because I have God on my side. Now in the Bible, it tells us that we need to cast all of our worries onto him. I know school's tough and everything else in the world is very confusing at the moment and worry is something that we're all struggling with. But you know what? Pray, get down on your knees and cast it all to God because he is listening. He's got you. He's holding his hands around you right now and telling you that it's going to be okay. So never worry. Don't fear because God's near. Bye. Hello, everyone. Well, my testimony is that as a younger person, I liked stories so much so that I needed to have the better story. And so I would catch myself lying to make my story better. And this is something that God challenged me on. He said that we shouldn't lie. And he's really helped me to just simply tell the story as it is now and not have to add anything on to look better. Thanks, Jill. Hi, guys. It's Auntie Bianca. I just want to tell you the victory that I had that I asked God to help me with. I have a really bad temper. So I get annoyed very fast when um, I need to do something and people interrupt me or when I try and work and people are very loud. And I've asked God to just give me the patience and to guide me so that I don't lose my temper too fast with people. You know, winning a soccer match or winning a school quiz or a dancing competition is great. But there's much more important things that God cares about. You see, God wants us to become more and more like Jesus. And so he wants us to beat all the bad habits and all the things that are, that are controlling us in our lives so that we can have the victory, so that we can be winners. I wonder, what do you need the victory over? Maybe you've got a problem that you're always telling lies and you kind of try to stop, but you're finding it really hard. God wants to give you the victory over that. Or maybe you're somebody that wants to play games on their tablet or on the computer all the time. I wonder if you've heard about a game called Minecraft or one called Fortnite. 
There's something about those games that seems to make children, especially boys, I think, want to play them all the time. And so all the time when they're awake, they're thinking, I just want to play the game, I want to play the game, I want to play the game, I want to play the game. That game is in control. That game is making them feel like they're beaten. God wants them to have the victory over that. Maybe you've got a bad habit like biting your nails or doing something like that. God wants to give you the victory over that. God's victory can help us to beat all the sins and all the bad things in our lives. Just like those stories we heard from the other people in the kids' church team. I've also got a story that I'm going to tell you now, and it's a story from the Bible. And it's about a guy who really was, I think, one of the meanest, cruelest, most horrible, unkind people that ever was. And God gave him the victory over all of those really bad habits and really bad sins. Listen to this story from the Bible. Saul was a mean man who was filled with hatred. He didn't like the Christians who believed in Jesus. Saul even made sure that some of the Christians were killed. One day, he decided to travel to a place called Damascus to round up the Christians that were living there and throw them in jail. When Saul was almost at Damascus, he saw a bright light shining from heaven. Saul fell to the ground and he heard a strange thing. It was God speaking to him. Saul's heart suddenly understood something wonderful. Jesus Christ was alive. Saul now believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and the Saviour of the world. He prayed to God and he became a Christian. From that moment, Saul was changed. He was different. God gave him the victory over his hatred and his meanness and his cruelty. He was so different that his name even changed from Saul to Paul. God had really given him the victory over the horrible things that used to be in control of him. Paul started to teach the people all about Jesus. He worked hard to share the good news with people. He was so different from how he'd been before. Paul even sailed to faraway places to tell the people there about Jesus. He told them how God had given him the victory and had made him a winner. And he explained to them that God could do the same for them. Paul wrote lots of letters to people and to churches far away from where he was. We have many of those letters today in our Bibles. Just like Paul, God's power in us can make us victorious. We can have the victory and be winners over things that we're struggling with in our lives. Let's pray together now. Father God, we've all got things that we need to beat in our lives. Maybe we're mean like Saul, or maybe we always feel scared, or we tell a lot of lies. Thank you that you know what we need to have victory over. Please help us to have the victory and to beat those things. Help us to become more like Jesus. Amen. You are winners. You are heroes. 
Now we've got a great craft coming up. It's a medal. And we wear medals when we are winners. And so we're going to make a medal today to remind us of how we are all winners. Auntie Robin's going to be coming with her girls and she's going to show you how to make the medal. And then you'll be able to go off and make your own. And don't forget to send me a photo. My name's Robin and these are my girls, Amber and Kara. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> and we're going to be showing you how to do the craft today. Um, this is what we're going to be making, a beautiful medal. So I think, Kara, you can wear this while we are busy. There we go. Look how awesome it looks. <laughs> okay, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your little piece of foam and you're going to use your cup to uh, trace a nice circle on there for the medal. So, um, Ernst, do you want to do that? Trace the... Perfect, let's see. <laughs> okay, great. And then you're going to cut it out for us. You're going to do the stickers. Okay. Perfect, show them how it looks. Cool. Then you're going to take your stickers, and Kara, you can do this bit. You can decorate your, um, you can actually decorate it all the way around the edge so that you've got space in the middle to put your big number one. So, Kara, well, you take your stickers, decorate your middle. Now we need a big number one. Show me your number one. We need a big number one in the middle. So we're going to use a nice cokey. Um, you, you draw a big number one. There we go. Draw a nice big number one, a thick number one. Perfect. It's cool, just like that. And now we're going to take our ribbon. And um, what you can do is you can fold it in half like that. Just meet up the ends. And we're going to stick it onto the back so you don't see it in the front. So, and you hold it like that. Uh -huh. You can And there it is. Okay. Bye everybody.